Good morning, folks. Great to be with you again this morning, and I trust that you're all well. Uh, as most will know, um, Bethel is open, um, and we're having our normal service. Well, a short, a, a shorter service uh, from 11 o'clock um, at the church. But for those that are still shielding or isolating, uh, we wanted to continue to put something online um, for uh, you know for you to be able to uh, enjoy. Uh, fellowshipping together, although we're at, uh, separated. Um, I, I trust that this morning uh, God will minister to you and uh, that you'll enjoy just a, a, a small bit of worship to start with. And then we're going to hear from um, um, Bobby, um, Chris's brother, Robert Pender. Um, and he's got a message for us. And then directly after that, we'll take, we'll take communion together. Um, so just uh, um, however you're meeting this morning, Enjoy the presence of Almighty God in that your yeah, in your home there. Amen. Bless you guys. Wonderful, so wonderful is your unfailing love. Your Christ has spoken mercy unto me. I have seen no ear has heard, no heart to fully know. How glorious, how beautiful you are. Beautiful, love you. Beautiful, I adore. Beautiful, my soul, my sin. works displayed for all to see. The beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to say, how marvelous, how wonderful you are. Beautiful, I love you. Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you You opened my eyes to your wonders anew You captured my heart with this love Cause nothing on earth is as beautiful as you Beautiful, Lord, I love you My soul, my soul, my sing, beautiful one. My soul, my soul, my sing, my soul, my soul, my sing, my soul, my soul, my sing, beautiful one. Beautiful one, I love you, beautiful one, I adore. I 
I fall before you now. Completely I surrender. And I receive the love. Offering to me I'm coming now I'm coming in I'm coming close Home again I'm coming now I'm coming in Coming close, warm again. I fall before you now. And kiss your feet in worship. can't resist the love the beauty that I see I fall before you now completely I surrender
coming in, coming close, home again, to worship you. Hello, it's nice to be back again. You may remember that the last time I spoke, we spoke on Gideon and his uh, call with God to come from obscurity um, into a very violent situation where he had just knocked down the altar of Baal that his father and uh, his people had been worshipping. And God had instructed him that he had to rebuild an altar um, and make a sacrifice for God. So coming out of the lockdown, it was important in order to get out of the lockdown and win the battle, then a new start and a new beginning had to take place. Let's just recap for a moment. First of all, Gideon... His opinion of himself is that he was the youngest of the family. He came from a very remote, poor village. And virtually he was saying to God, you are saying to me to fight and destroy the enemy. God, do you really know what you're talking about? Me? Surely not me. And then one after the other, he began to make excuses and, and ask for signs and testing God's patience. But it's good to know that when we are slow to move to what God is asking us to do, God is very patient. In fact, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, it says, God is patient for us and with us. And I'm glad that today I can say that God has been patient with me and I know many times he's been patient with you. And so I left at the very end of my last message that the people in the village, in the town, woke up not by the noise of the altar being thrown to the ground, not by the hammering and the cementing of the new altar being put up, but they woke up in the morning smelling the smell of the sacrifice. And I want to start again today. Let us take that deep sniff, that deep smell, and think to yourself, outside in the factories, outside in the offices, outside in the schools, do people recognise that there's something going on, something different are we coming out of the lockdown of, of tiredness, of want and of worry? Are we coming out different people? Can people see that we have made a, a statement and a claim that we are God's children and how we behave and what we do has made a difference? Do they see that we are kinder, that we're more helpful? Is there a difference in your life because during this lockdown period you've put your heart and your place right with God? you put God first in your thoughts, God first in your planning. you put him right in the very centre of your heart. That's why the people, as you go outside, will say, there's something different in Mary. There's something different in John. There's something different in Peter. 
There's something different in Christine because they have been with God in the lockdown time and have rededicated their lives to God. It was at this time that people became, became even more angry. Who pulled this altar down? Who did that? And it says that the armies of the Midianites and the Far East countries all gathered in masses to destroy this man Gideon and his people. But I love that in, in verse 34, the Bible says me just before the battle began, it says, the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. And what a difference that makes when God's Holy Spirit empowers us, almost like the day of Pentecost, when after Jesus was resurrected up into heaven, and the disciples were gathered in the upper room. They were almost, as it were, hiding from the howling mob outside. But the Bible tells me that there came a rushing wind like fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they received the Holy Ghost, and they received power and authority. And from that day on, the church was born, and they went out, and many people were one to Jesus Christ. I think of Peter, the one that uh, was the denier, out preaching with power and, and witnessing. He came out of a lockdown, changed, and people knew that there was a difference. But now, here is dead Gideon. And he had a plan. He started to shout out to all his people for, who were spread out over all the different areas and different lands. Come, I need an army. I need you to come and help me to fight this enemy. So the crowd gathered, all oh, 22,000 of them. And I'm sure Gideon had a nice big smile and a feeling of comfort in his bones with all these people supporting him. But you see, man's way is not God's ways. You see, if they had won the battle with that massive army that he had gathered up, then people would have been saying, great victory, Gideon, you've done well, Gideon. But God's way is not that way. And God says, too many people. It's not the right plan for me. And so God made a test that they had to bring those armies down to the water. Some went down on their knees and there they uh, licked up the water. Then another lot, they went down with one hand in the water, another hand watching and waiting. And in the end, God chose out of those 20,000 people, 300 men for battle. I can imagine Gideon saying, God, do you know what you're doing? Do you see all the armies of the Midianites and the armies of the East? But God says, don't worry, Gideon. These are my chosen people. I have chosen you and I have chosen this band. And you will win the battle because I will fight for you. Okay, God. But God could see into his heart that he was doubting. And what I like about our God is that he gives you comfort and he'll give you confidence. So he says to Gideon, Gideon, you take your right hand man and go down into the valley. Go right into the, 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 the war front and see for yourself. So he goes down into the valley with his right-hand man, and as he's down there, he hears soldiers talking. So he must have been pretty close to the tents where they were. I'm sure his heart was beep beating. I'm sure that within his body, his legs were knocking. What if they catch us? But God was with them not only to win the battle, but to protect him. And he could hear a soldier talking about a dream. 
and the dream been interpreted. And as he left there, he was convinced then, because of the interpretation of this dream, that God was with him. But while he was in the valley, down at the, the, the very front of the war front, all he could see, it says, the camels were like locusts. Many thousands of them, many thousands of men. They had 300 men. And so as they stood round the top of the hill with 300 men, what were they going to use? Swords? Big heavy poles? Maybe some uh, sharp instruments like axes? What were they going to do? Maybe big slings? No, God says, I want you to take clay pots with a light and trumpets. I can hear some of the 300 saying, Gideon, cuckoo, are you sure? Remember, God's ways, not our ways. His ways are higher than our ways. And so Gideon then separated the men into 300 here, 300 there, 300 there. And he says, listen to me. When I blow the trumpet, crack the, the clay pots and show the light and blow the trumpet. Down in the valley, all the army with their thousands and with their camels all there, suddenly you could hear the clatter and the crash of, of these clay pots shattering. What is that? And as they looked, all they could see was a spread of lights all the way around. And to the uh, Midianites and the army, it looked that there was a mighty army there. And they started to panic and flee. In fact, they started to fight each other as they fell over each other and started to kill each other. And that day, God won the battle his way. Oh, how encouraging is that is to you and me today. That when things seem impossible, we realize that with God, all things are possible. It is so exciting and so encouraging. And as he came out of the, the victory, he was so excited, he was so happy. And yet there were those that would say, well, why didn't you call us into, uh, into the battle? It was a huge army, and you know, two, three hundred people. We volunteered, why didn't you take us? And you know, the thing is, in life, oftentimes when you do the right, in the right side for God, you'll always get people who will criticise. I want to give an illustration here, which reminds me of the story I told. Um, there was... Uh, Gary Clark of Hillsong Church in London, 25 years ago, he came into London, called of God to do a battle and to win London and the area of London over to God. And he walked along the, the Alfred Street and down by Soho and by all the West End cinemas with his friend Gio. And as he looked at it, he said, wow, one day wouldn't it be good to fill these theatres with people worshipping God. And do you know something? God took him at his word. And today, the Dominion Theatre, four services per day. North London, another theatre filled uh, four times a day. Guildford in, uh, in Surrey, Tunbridge in Kent, um, Newcastle, um, it goes on Liverpool, Edinburgh, Paris, um, Milan, and Germany. It goes on and on, even uh, taking services into Israel itself and, uh, and into the Far East. Gary and a small band trusted God and worked at God's plan. But even at that, you know, some people will complain, will criticise. 
what he's been doing. They will say, he must be a showman. He must be, you know, great wealth and swinging fashion. Gary's the total opposite. You would pass him by, not even recognise him. He'll wear a dark t-shirt, dark trousers, a leather or some type of jerkin jacket. He's the least expected you would think that God would use to do such a great work. And like Gideon, all he did was obey God. And I say to you today, maybe your church is small just now. But God can take you as a small army with faithful workers, walk around your town and claim it for God and you'll see what a difference that will make. So what happens? Here the Bible tells me also that because of the success of his battles and his victories, the people were saying, well, you're great. Uh, you be our king, Gideon. You're a great man. You're a great leader from being a, a, an insignificant little man in a small village. Here you are now slaying these great armies, a great leader. Will you be our leader? Will you be our king? This is how to deal with success. Gideon says, no, I will not be your king. There's only one Lord and there's one God. And as I've studied and looked at Pastor Gary Clark, I can see this in him. Never does he pride himself in success, but all the time points out God is in it and God has done it. How do then do we face criticism? I'm sure they said, Gideon, you've got too big. You've won many, too many battles. You've got more men with you now. You've got more followers now. Wouldn't we better just be small and insignificant? Almost like the story of Gary, isn't it? Don't get dragged away from your vision when people see success in God's work. Keep your eye on the vision that God has set up for you. Display the right spirit. Don't argue. Treat those who criticize you with dignity. Try to understand where they come from and point them to the reason for your success which is God himself. I trust now that we're coming out of lockdown, we will smell different, we will act different, and we'll give God all the praise and all the glory for a great victory. Amen. So let's, let's take communion together now, shall we? And... Um, just going to read from um, 1 Corinthians 11 and we know this passage but just just to prepare ourselves if you've got um, if you've got something there to take communion so the emblems there that would be great uh, 1 Corinthians 11 23 for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed he took the bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. So we have the emblems here and we're just, uh, we're going to partake together. But first I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you for these emblems that speak so clearly of your sacrificial death on a cross and you said to your friends do this in remembrance of me the the bread broken as your body was broken the the wine poured out as your blood was poured out freely for us 
so we remember it again today once more and once less until you come amen we take the, the bread we break it we recognize that jesus body was broken for us And we take the wine or the juice which has been poured out and we recognise Jesus' blood poured out freely for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Speak to you um, during the week, I'm sure. Um, hope to see you very soon. Bye now.